Steve Rogers here with the TI slider. We'll do an installation on the straight on the boat. So this is the way that uh, I would install it if we were installing the TI slider. All right, so firstly, this is our area here, nice and clean. Make sure that it's all nice and clean. And then tape it up with um, masking tape so you can draw all over it without creating any issues. We're installing a uh, Panoptix PS30 transducer, which has been adapted to suit the um, the TI slider. So we've already screwed that on. We screwed the transducer on there so that we can determine what height we need to go. So basically with the TI slider, these adjustment brackets are movable. So we can move them where we want. And you can see here, these are offset, different, different heights there. And that's because we've got a taper here of the transom. We can then have this bracket here sitting out here at the, at the far end of the taper. And this one here down low, uh, wherever we want it, we can put them wherever we want to put those those, bra those fixing brackets. So hold that up against there and then hold it at the height you want. So I'm going to aim here for about 50 millimeters, two inches under the hull. And just, uh, and then that way the customer has got the option to lift it if they need to. They can either lift it through the eye bolt guide or they can even lift it by releasing the bolts here and sliding the whole unit up if they feel that it's too high so let's put it in position mark and mark one hole okay so that's where i want it and i don't want to have the slide unit going underneath the hole because that will cause turbulence so all i want in the water is the arms and the transducer to keep the minimal minimal amount of turbulence occurring in the water so my first hole is going to go right up there i'm only doing one hole at the moment because so then i can hold it in position and i can level it up and have a look Okay, so what I've done, I've just sort of um, done like a little tiny drill bit hole. I've got a step drill here just to create, to take away the gel coat so it doesn't split. Kind of just creates a wider opening at the beginning. And then I've got a, um, a five millimeter drill bit here to pre-drill my 12 gauge stainless steel screws. So these are pretty chunky screws. And these are six millimeter outside diameter. This is a five millimeter pre-drill. You want to make sure you get your pre-drill correct because otherwise you'll snap these these will get hot and they'll just snap like butter so make sure your pre-drill is adequate enough to for the screw to bite in but not too big that the screw just turns out so you got to think carefully about that if you want to trial it beforehand it might be best to try it on a piece of timber or something just to be sure so let's screw let's drill the hole for the first first screw oh i want to set my depth so i don't want to go any deeper than the screw itself so Let's set the drill bit at that height. All right, it's about there. Same height. It's a little bit longer, but that's fine. It's it's also good too if you want to pre if you want to pre tap the hole with a mild steel screw, 12 gauge screw, same size. And then that way you've got a thread there already waiting for it. But I'm not going to do that here. Yeah, be really careful doing that because that if this gets hot, it will snap probably wouldn't advise to use one of these either unless you really know what you're doing if you, you could easily go overboard with this and just ram it down and then it snaps off so these aren't these are good if you know what you if you're using them all the time the trays people but be careful using these otherwise just use a, um, a, so a socket wrench okay so i've got my height now I, I need to know if it's straight so the only way to do that is to me go out there and just sight it So I'm happy with that level there. And I'll just go on to mark my other holes. You could mark the holes in the center so you've got a bit of adjustment up and down, but there's plenty of adjustment in this. So if anything goes wrong, you can always adjust that, but I'm gonna put it on the top so the thing will never fall down. So I've got all, all holes marked. And then I'm gonna take it off and drill all the holes. Okay, so all holes drilled. So what I'm gonna do is countersunk, countersink, those holes so that I can fill them with silicon and that silicon will keep that area completely preventative of water getting in in there so I'm going to countersunk all these holes okay and then we have it let's take off the masking tape okay just clean up the masking tape now I've decided to set a good example and pre-drill pre-tap the holes with a mild steel screw of the same size so that way we're not going to it's not going to break as easy so I'm going to re-tap these I'm gonna tap these with this one. I don't like doing that, but there you get that. It's just this is a mild steel screw because it's a little bit stronger than the stainless. Stainless, um, if they get hot, that's it. Whereas the mild steel screw can handle a bit more heat. I've just tapped those holes so that the new stainless ones just glide in. Now, because this is gonna be coming off after, I'm, I'm not gonna do this now, but what I would do then is silicon 
because I've countersunk those holes, I'll just put as much silicon in there as I can and uh, clean that off. And then I'll put the, um, the slider on just to prevent water getting into the hole there. So I would use silicon usually of some sort before I screw it all in. Then I would go over them with, they're not fully done up, but I'll just, I'll go over them now with the socket spanner so that I can feel what it's like. You don't need to crank the crap out of it, just, just a little bit. To feel it. Or just use a spanner. Okay, they're all done up nicely. What I would do is then I would get the customer to check this out, make sure it's all working correctly. Before I would do a final, I would do a final screw, which you can just do through one of these holes here. I would do a final locking screw at the end of it. So that would just be a matter of pre-drilling a hole without having to take the whole thing off, pre-drill the hole and uh, maybe with the silicon tube end, you might be able to squeeze it through just to get some silicon in there and do one final locking screw when you know it's all good. It doesn't really matter what screw you use, it should, it should the eye, eye bolt won't hit it. So that's it, we can lock it off. We've got it, this, at this high end, we've probably got 50 millimeters, two inches. And on this side, we're pretty much level with the, with the hole. So we're right under the water there. And now we can set this angle here as easily with these bolts here. Obviously we're using different transducers. You'll have different set up here, but this ones have to be offset. Customer needed the uh, panoptics here to be off offset. So you couldn't have it in the central. central. So that's why we've come over here to the side a little bit. But we can do that with the mount, with the bracket, with the TI slider, easy. Yeah, so um, I think it's a good feature here that we can put these brackets wherever we want. And you can add more brackets if you need to, or you can screw through the channel. That's it, we've basically um, got a cable tie there. Cable tie the, the wires up there. The rest will go up to where he's going to take it through the transom there. When he's traveling, he can lock that off into the nut and that's, that it can't come down. Um, regardless of the corrugation or whatever, if he's going over the roads, that's not going to drop now, that's locked in. And then when he gets to sight, he can drop down to the, the bottom and it's going to self center on a nut there and lock it in. That's good to go. If, if, he, if he found that was too deep, remember what I said, you, all we gotta do is unscrew these bolts here and we can lift the whole unit up and we've got like 15 millimeter increments, we can lift that up along with, along with this. So there's lots of adjustment in height that we can do with this, with this sliding mechanism. It's all high quality, 316 stainless, three millimeter. So um, it's built to last. That's it, guy slider. Let me know what you think in the comments. See if, if you think it's a good idea or think it's worth it. Tell me what you think. Thanks for watching.